Welcome back, Yeehaw Crew. It's your captain, Yeehaw Yadam, and we're back with another Locals Vlog. So after last week's Miami Treasure Cup, I've been excited to play some One Piece. Yeah, I know that there's the, the meta's kind of defined, so I want to play something a little bit unorthodox. I'm going to be taking Purple Crocodile Local today. We're going to be going to Kingslayer Cardboard and Games here in Miami, Florida. Let's see if the Purple Crocodile can take a couple dubs. See you guys. All right, guys, so we're here at Kingslayer Games. Not that much of a ride for me, but it does seem to be a little late outside. It's a Wednesday, so they gotta start late in the evening around seven o'clock, just to make sure that everyone that gets out of work can come and play the game at a really uh, safe time. So let's go and take Purple Crocodile and see what he can do versus the meta. Let's see if I can stand up to those kids and beat up on some red. Let's get it. And we're back with the gameplay commentary, baby. I know it's been a bit before, since we've done a Locals vlog, but uh, I'm definitely glad to be back. Also, the link to the deck profile will be in the description down below. In this vlog, I actually played a variety of different decks, and actually it was all what seemed to be meta contenders except red. So game one here, I am playing blue-purple crocodile versus my very scary green matchup. This is round one. So I am playing versus a newer player. I'm glad. I'm always glad to see new players um, coming into the game because it's absolutely wonderful. Now this gentleman, he has experience from Yu-Gi-Oh, and therefore he's not a complete, uh, completely new to card games. But it's definitely the inexperience in One Piece might show throughout this game. So I'm gonna go in his first turn. Veggie, really strong start into Okiku, and then uh, I remind him here that you know in this game. Uh, the characters that come on to play have summoning sickness. So he goes ahead and takes that back. But the Okiku summon and Veggie seem absolutely fine. He's going to go ahead and attack my leader for five. And I'm really contemplating defending this, but I do not want to go ahead and like pitch a two for a one. So I'll go ahead and take the life and I'll draw for turn, right? In uh, a four lifer, you don't really want to get too low. And especially versus Kid, you know, if you get to the one threshold, Eustace is coming, right? He's going to go swing, restand, swing. So I don't want to lose the board. And I really don't want to lose life. So that's what makes this matchup really, really scary. And especially if he can, is able to field an A-drop kid, we're going to be in a really, really bad spot. But the Jack is going to do a lot of a lot of the heavy lifting. I'm not going to swing because I don't want to give him additional cards in his hand at this time. I can't really afford to do that. If I give him more combo power, then he can, you know, maintain that Okiku. And then I'm really in a tough position. So developing this Uda into the Okiku feels terrible but i do have a lot of combo power in hand i leave one up for a desert spot uh, i have double 2ks in hand uh the uda should be protected this game so he actually goes uh six at face resting the uda perfectly that's just good gaming and then he still has a total of i believe five dawn available to him so he'll go ahead and put one on the leader i will combo out six again and this is, uh, so he swung at, either if he swings at lead or Uda there, I was going to have to combo out. I can't let either of those characters go. Uda is going to have to do a lot of the heavy lifting for me here. So we're going to go all the way up to the next amount of Dawn. And I think maybe he actually forgot to place Dawn here, which is unfortunate. So I'll go seven at the Okiku. He lets that go, which is actually a breath of fresh air. Um, because I have four cards in my hand, I have to resolve my effect of my event first. So I will go ahead and add Miss All Sunday. I'll stack the bottom of the deck and put it at the bottom. But since I now have five cards, blue purple crocodile's effect does not uh, activate. Uh, I don't think there's any way that I can do it so that he, I can activate his effect this turn because I just have too many cards in hand. I will go ahead and field the miss all Sunday and I'll pass it back to him. Being a little bit more comfortable now that I went ahead and removed the Okiku from play. But I think the missing of the Dawn might be a, a big issue and kind of like <laughs> almost invalidates this game. But it is what it is. Uh, he's going to go ahead and tap Momo and it will add the Paradise Waterfall. Paradise Waterfall, an absolutely killer card in this game. I'm going to go ahead and play a Bonnie and tap the Bonnie. So we know that he has Waterfall in hand. And he's about to add a very scary card, which is the 8 drop use this captain kid now the eight cost is what really makes this game a little bit difficult for us uh, because we have to push through it and his hand so it becomes a very long battle of attrition uh, and he's going to go six face i'm going to go ahead and tap the uda here 
Lay the Desert Spada. It's going to go ahead and look at the top three cards of my deck. Now, that Crocodile is an absolute Chad. So, uh, I decided to stack the 2k since I'm drawing anyway. So, I'll go ahead and draw because of the Crocodile effect since I'm at 4. And then I will minus 1 to rest the Veggie, right? So, Uda, my goodness. So, a fantastic addition. All the purple, like the Film Starter deck seems really, really good for Blue Purple Crocodile. All, all the cards I played from them uh, okay, really, really strong. Specifically, Uda. Douglas Bullet. He feels cute more than anything, actually. I very much never feel that it wants. It's just too much. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to slam down my 7-drop. Uh, just because I know that he has the Eustace Captain Kid, I do have to uh, have some sort of tempo before he summons it down. Something that can potentially contest it. So I'll go 5 at the Bonnie. I'll go 4 at the... So it's going to be 1 at the Momo. Using my Missile Sunday offensively. Uh, he's going to go ahead and restand the Veggie here. Then I'm going to go 4 at it. I mean, use Jack's effect because he doesn't have to have a Dawn to, to use its effect. So I'm going to swing at the Momo and rip a card from his hand. Um, and then I will go ahead and pass my turn, keeping the Uda there. Uh, unfortunately, not being able to kill the Veggie, Paradise Waterfall being a little punishing. But I did want to keep a Dawn up for whatever ungodly reason. <laughs> I don't have any spells in my hand. But the Missile Sunday can cycle back to Desert Spada. But then again, if I don't have a Dawn under my leader, I don't know. I should have put one on the Missile Sunday. At, at the end of the day, that's that's what a little mistake here to play around the Paradise Waterfall. So he's going to go ahead and play Izo. Izo will be able to rest the Uda because it is a, a four cost. And now I have to play defense. So he's going to go seven, but he swings the seven at the face. And then he, he deciding still has a bit of Dawn here. So he played three, played two. So he has five. Eight total dawn left, and that, that's where the issue comes in of like missing the two dawn turn because I think he'd be at ten here, be able to play a law. But he actually activates kid's effect, uh, pitches a card to restand. I combo out of this with a two k and a one k, because uh, right now I don't need those characters. They don't need to be fielded. My board is full of all the characters I need to win this game. Uh, a jack, a seven drop, and an Uda should be able to take me all the way to victory. So I'm gonna go ahead and seven at the leader, and then thinking how I want to do this. I'll go nine at the leader uh, with Banish. He goes ahead and combos, and I'm like, well, he's nine. That That's an eight. So uh, he adds another Izo to the pot. So I'm very okay with this. That's what makes this Crocodile absolutely so powerful. I'm going to go swing five at lead, trigger his effect, or move one off the Crocodile. And now that's really cute, right? It still keeps one on the Crocodile. He swung for nine, and I still was able to rip a card out of hand. So that turn, I ripped four from hand, five from hand. And was able to deal a point of damage now i still have two blockers i have four dawn available and my blue event spells are now one cost cheaper because of the seven drop crocodile and at a point like this even if he's able to summon this a drop which he is here by removing five cards out of his hand there's just no shot that he's able to defend it he'll go play it a dawn on it and then he's gonna go ahead and arrest it uh, play a killer and then play a put a dawn under the cut. Now that seems like a really solid play now. And there's a little mistake, mistakey poo, if you will. So he's gonna go ahead and swing. I'm gonna Uda to block the five, and then I don't want to pitch the missile sign. So I'm gonna use Uda's effect to minus one, still keeping one under my leader to rest that, and then I'll pitch one. I didn't want to use the love love beam here, uh, but maybe I should have to double drawn and already put a love love beam in the trash for my missile Sunday. So again. Just small nuances, because this turn I'm going to use a lot of Dawn. I'm just swinging at this kid for eight. I'm not swinging any higher than eight, because there's just legitimately no point to do so. So I'll go eight here, eight here. He's going to block. Now he has one card left in hand, and guess what Jack does? Swing, trigger, effect, remove one. Remove that card and remove the kid. Man, one thing I learned from this tournament is that this Jack is an animal, an absolute animal of a card. It is so crazy. So I keep one up which represents a Love Love Beam under the Crocodile. If I pitch my Missile Sunday, I have Love Love Beam Desert Spada available to me. So in a really nice spot, I'm holding these Kings for for something. <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, like I said, I don't need them in my hand anymore. The only reason uh, these Kings, the only way these Kings are getting out of my hand is if I draw Queens. Uh, but other than that, I don't think I'm going to need them to win this game. I die. My board is established and all I have to use my Dawn is for offense and for defense. I was going to go five at my face here. I do not want to really use my Love Love Beam here, but it is what it is. I have three cards in hand, so I'll draw for Love Love Beam. I'll draw for Crocodile. So I'm all the way from all the way back up to five, and I still have a Miss All Sunday for defense. He's going to go. I'll block with a Miss All Sunday. I'll add the Love Love Beam back because it's just... And this Douglas Bullet is, again, never going to get fielded. Uh, and he swings at my face. 
So, all right, let's see what we do here. I still have so much combo power in hand. Even if he 12 12s me, I'm at one life. Even if he goes for that 12 12, uh, there's certainly no way that he can live. So I'll go five minus one to remove that card from his hand. Five, it's a, and it's a veggie, it, it's over. Uh, Jack, just being able, in a simplified game state, Jack is so, so strong, man. Just remove a card from hand and defend your board if you so choose to is so absolutely powerful. And um, that card definitely just keeps coming into play game after game after game. So we'll keep looking at it. Uh, so my opponent choosing to go, I believe, back in here. Is that a hand of six? Did he draw six? Okay. Uh, I choose to mulligan. My hand is really not good enough. And this matchup is terrifying, right? Because of the fact that my the best character card in my deck, which is Crocodile, is a seven cost. And you know what blue does really well against seven costs. So I have to very much, I can't field that card efficiently, right? Because just like Eustace Captain Kid, the seven cost blocker is a strong card in green. One of the ways that you lose this matchup is by fielding, paying seven Dawn, playing your whole turn and then losing your whole turn immediately to a tempo cost of Flamingo or Mihawk. So I can't really play into that. And I have to use my weenies or my enter the battlefield effects or on plays to win me the game. So Queens, Kings, those cards, exceptional in this matchup. And that's really what I'm looking for here. A mixture of those cards and just a bunch of little memes. So I've attached one to my crocodile for fun because at this point in time, since I'm going second, I have too many cards in hand. If I was going first, I was able to fill like the law blocker, then I could, able, I could be able to trigger his effect immediately. But at this point, I am not. So he's gonna go ahead and use Flamingo's effect to seven me. Seven's big, man. Seven on the first attack is really, really rough. It's something that I don't necessarily want to combo out of, but um, I, I, I choose to get to the combo out of. So by allowing me to pitch the jack, I am able to effectively draw the card off of my deck, right? Because I'm now at four, right? So I'll choose to use Crocodile's effect to draw a card and then I'll draw for turn. Uh, and I have one of the strongest cards in my deck in my hand right now. So uh, I'm trying to think if I do field the three Dawn here or if, I put, if I'm putting a Dawn on the Crocodile, if I'm not putting a Dawn on the Crocodile. I'm, I'm choosing to be super duper greedy here. And I'm going five out of four. Five out of four is not great. This is in range of a Draco Mihawk. It goes ahead and pitches to Virgo and Bartholomew Kuma, and I have to field Boa Hancock. Now, Boa Hancock is really, really strong in this matchup, right? Because it, specifically in Burple Crocodile. Crocodile will go draw me from four to five, and Boa will draw me from five to six every turn. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do with this card. And as you will see, and my opponent, we, we were talking at the end of the game, Boa feels insane in this deck. The amount of, uh, the just the math just works out four to five, five to six, and then every turn I'm playing with six cards in hand. Uh, necessarily if I really choose to. So I'll go all the way up to six Dawn here. And six Dawn's pretty good. So I'll go five at the Gecko Moria. Now I have the King in hand and the reason he played that turn and he pitched two as opposed to a Mihawk, well, A, he didn't have the Mihawk. And secondly, he was gonna play the Gecko off the top. Anyway, so I'll King the Gecko and we're in a good spot. Remove a card from hand and then remove the card from board. But minusing one Dawn this early does feel kind of crappy we're okay with it we want the tempo a 7k character is really really good onto this board state and it will allow me to ev eventually get the tempo the point of this deck is not to flood the board not to have super board control one to two really good character cards will get us uh where we need to get where we need to go <laughs> so i'll go ahead and combo off here out of a seven i pitch a 2k and then i lose my crocodile literally my favorite one of my favorite cards in the game he must go i cannot feel them in this matchup and that's just uh just it took a lot of willpower to let him go like that, but I understand how this matchup goes and I just have to do it correctly. Now I have a lot of Dawn to work here. I no longer need uh, to use my Dawn to summon characters, but I'm okay with summoning a law to get me down to five, one, two, three, four, five. Boa will then get me to six. Uh, and I, there, just like that, we go ahead and clear a law. Well, six at the Mihawk. And I'm down to do this, right? Cause I still have a seven on the board. He can either give me a blocker, give me a 2K or it, it's just, with the weak amount of characters that I have, we will truly get there. So he gives me the blocker and then he removes the character and I will play another law, putting me down to five cards in hand. And five cards is really good because if I use any event, by playing the event, I go immediately down to four and then trigger the crocodile ability. It's just juicy. Uh, so he's going to go ahead and go back to his turn, debating what he wants to do here. I really do not care about the Peronas. Funnily enough, my opponent swings with the Peronas very often this game, and I'm very okay with it. For a Perona to swing, you need to put three Dawn under it. Three Dawn, if you're at 10 Dawn, is 33% of your turn, and go for it, dog. Uh, so I'm going to go and play the Desert Spada, go all the way down to four Dawn, 
thinking about how I want to stack this, trigger Crocodile's ability, and then I'll combo out using the top card of my deck. Uh, he didn't know what was on the top, but he whiffed, and it's looking like he's just, he's very starved out of cards in hand, uh, and I'm very, very happy about that. He's going to go five at phase here. Again, I don't really want to over combo. I have a miss all Sunday. I, I'm going to just choose to remove the blocker here for a 5k. Then it goes off to my turn. He still has three Dawn available, which I'm okay with. He can play the defense game, but I play the defense game better. So I'm at five. Again, just the math is out. Go to six off of the boa. So good. It's actually insane. I'll go six at lead. I haven't decided if I'm going to go seven at lead. I'm going to tell him, hey, you're taking this. Seven at lead again. And these are just numbers that are just the good numbers. And that's something that's cool about the Crocodile deck that I can choose either to hit you with sixes, which is okay. Uh, the sixes aren't bad because it effectively pitches 2Ks constantly. And eventually you will run out of them. But then if I want you to take damage, I just put one more Dawn on the leader and I'm very okay with it. So I'll play a Law and a Miss all Sunday. That's my turn here. Uh, still keeping up two Dawn for what seems to be like a Love Love Beam. That Boa has already drawn me two cards. Slay Queen XD. <laughs> And then again, keeping the Peronas on board, I just do not care for them. You can swim with them all day, brother. Uh, so we'll go ahead and he's at 10 Dawn, pay one for the Perona, deciding what he wants to do here. And then finally figuring out how he wants to do the stack. I think my opponent has a four cards in hand. The entire game, I'm just asking him cards in hand. Uh, and that really is a big takeaway. Choosing when to go for board, when to go for face is really, really important. Uh, he's deciding how much Dawn he wants to commit into one of these swings. Uh, as I'm keeping two Dawn up, it's just terrifying for him. Even though I have a 5k on the board in terms of the Boa, or the, the 7k is almost a god, right? The 7k, if just by presenting two, I just go to 11, and that's just too much commit to even be able to do. So he's going to go ahead and uh, swing at the Boa for seven, trigger the effect of the Flamingo, play the Teach. Teach is going to bounce to the Miss all Sunday, which seems great. I don't want to pitch a Love Love Beam here, because now since he made me go up to four cards in hand, I won't get the double draw off the Love Love Beam. And I don't want that. I want full value. Uh, unfortunately here, I believe he uh, he swings and I just pitch my queen here. I, this queen isn't necessary to win me the game. So I'm going to go six at the Tej. That goes to five, goes straight to six. And it's just every single turn I'm starting at six cards in hand. And it's just, just terrible for him. Uh, he goes ahead and combos out of the six. And I'm cool with that. Uh, no problem that you're going to just give me your entire hand. Uh, he chooses to block here. I go six. I don't need to put two Dawn on him this turn because I just want to go above by two. He love love beams it and then I just kill it with my king. Like I'm very okay forcing a love love beam for, you know, this play. And then I can go ahead and field a jack and a miss all Sunday. And then now we have two blockers, one Dawn up and a simplified game state where Jack is just going to town, bro. This man is going to get promoted to the Ripper. It's his nickname. So my opponent's going all the way up to 10 Dawn once again. Placing a Dawn on their Dolphy, not really um, using his effect this turn. I'm going to use the Missile Sunday. Missile Sunday is going to get me the Desert Spada. As I have one Dawn available to me, I will make use of it. I have two Love Love Beams in hand, so I don't really need to do anything crazy there. And then he just Mihawks the six cost away. And I'm, I'm cool with that. I have Jack now. So <laughs> King got switched out for Jack this time. So um, I'm deciding how I really want to do this turn. I, it took me a little bit to figure out how I want to play this. So I'll play the Uda first. And Uda is absolutely a champion in this deck. So I'll go five, rip a card from hand, and then he either chooses to take this or take the damage. I, he removes a Gecko Moria. I use the Dawn minus one on the cards that I spent on the Uda. Just wanted to play a card first. Jax also, and you'll see how I use him later on, very effective when I remove Dawn from characters that already attacked, like in the previous game. Uh, and then I'll swing six, I'll swing six, I'll draw a card, and I can keep three Dawn up. And that turn, I... There's just a lot of tempo on the board. Even though there's a Mihawk, and Mihawk did get a lot of value. Uh, <laughs> what do we do? So we'll go ahead and play Don Quixote do Flamingo, the three cost blocker. This card's really, really solid, but he's a little heavy, right? 30% of your turn is going to be used and spent to look at the top of your deck. And then that's something he was uh, struggling with a lot. He was saying, man, my top of the deck is just uh, not good enough. And I kept asking him, you know, maybe you should bottom. Um, and that's kind of the tough part of the Flamingo deck, knowing when to bottom, when to top, like this is not good enough, this won't get me there, stuff like that. So he goes ahead and swings with the leader, and here's kind of a mistake here. I go ahead and block with the Uda, use the Dawn minus one to, to do that, and then I will 2k. I don't mind pitching characters out of my hand, and then goes another Crocodile. Pitching characters out of my hand, because I want to drop my hand down so I can use my leader ability as well as the ability on my uh, event spells. So he's going to go ahead and swing with the Perona. I am at now three cards in hand. going to stack the deck, draw a card off of the Crocodile. He is going to Mihawk me, and then I will 
deciding if I just combo out of this or I just defend it. And I choose to, uh, I'll pitch the Boa first and then I will love, love being which to draw me a card. Uh, so that'll effectively get me to the same situation uh, of four cards, not five this turn. So uh, at, in this board state, he has no blockers and he has two Dawn available, two cards in hand. So I will, again, this board control is absolutely fine here. I have a lot of good cards in hand. I go six at the four and uh, I'm deciding what I really want to do here. I'll choose to Baroque work first before I continue with my turn. Look at the top five cards. I'll add the Spada. I am below, so I'll draw a bonus card. And now I'm at five. I'll go ahead and swing five, trigger his effect to Dawn minus one, the Baroque work card. So pitch a card from him. And then do you take this damage? And that's the scary part. If you take this damage, you go down to one. And I have two 5Ks on the board with a ton of Dawn available. So you might even lose the game. So he Desert Spadas just to lock that damage uh sorry for the shaky cam i you know my stand is on the table and people are shaking it up and getting nervous so i'll go six no point to make him like push i go to five i'll show him that i'm at five draw for six i draw a blast breath heck yeah um he takes the damage he has zero cards in hand uh and then i don't want to swing with this uda but i don't really know what i want to do from here and there you see douglas bullet just becoming a bullet in my hand <laughs> and i'll just go ahead and keep up six i don't need to commit to this board whatsoever i have six in hand at this point in time and all he really has is a mihawk and a jinbei and a dream don't forget the dream um, so definitely talking about how absolutely we're just here chatting um playing against khalil he uh, he ended up getting top eight in the miami treasure cup super cool guy playing against his captain kid uh, every time we play we just have a lot of fun we talk and sometimes you know we, we play a little slow because of that but we did not go into time in a purple versus blue matchup so no one has an excuse for going into time uh, so doing a lot of thinking but again he has two cards in hand so he has a limited amount of options available to him and that's all the purple deck wants to do give myself the options and remove the options from my opponent uh, so he wants to go ahead and attach his dawn here he goes a six at my four and now six at four really really solid um yeah i forgot that i was like wait a minute he's weak dang it <laughs> So how do I defend him? I don't want to lose this Jack because Jack, in a again, in a simplified game state, he's going to have one to two cards in hand. That Jack will legitimately buy himself one in the game. So since I don't want to pitch two cards out of my hand, I will choose to block this, which may or may not have been good because then this Miha can go to town on me. He's going to go and seven. He's going to use this and try to get an effect off. He he hits. He hits the Boa Hancock. Now, remember, this has been played. So he's going to seven my four and sevening a four is just not correct because of my very powerful 4Ks. Uh, again, I, I don't know what, what he wants to commit the rest of his turn to, but uh, you go even on even and odd on odds. That's a very simple way to, to look at things. So then uh, I easily combo out of that with a Blast Breath. Shout out to my Blast Breaths. And then he swings at my Jack here, and I think I'm going to sacrifice my Uda in order to get the maximum amount of value that I need, right? Uda can go ahead and... I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but he's swinging for 10. I'm trying to decide how I want to combo this, if I want to combo this. So taking a quick little thinky poo. I'll go ahead and pitch uh, defend here. So I'll go to seven, go down to four. I'll look at the top three cards of my deck, stack them how I want. I'll add the queen to the top, <clears throat> draw off of the leader ability. So I'm currently at seven. And then I will love, love beam to put me all the way up to 11. And then I'm still down to uh, four to four cards in hand. And then he has only Dawn available. No more attackers except the Peronas. If he wants to go ahead and commit Peronas, I'm super down with it. Then he has two cards in hand, which he kind of knows that he needs to save as combo power. But unfortunately here, eh, no amount of combo power is about to save you from this Jack. <laughs> So he'll go ahead and play a Hancock and he taps out for this and tapping out is really, really scary because I know now he doesn't have any beams or spadas or any spicy cards like that. Um, and then he's now down to one card in hand. So this king is about to clean house, right? This is what I've been saving this king for. Uh, it's going to remove this Boa Hancock, leaving me with three down available. I will swing at you. Actually, I'm like deciding how I want to do it. I'll go Jack first, remove minus once, remove the card from hand. So he eats it, then five, remove the card and the leader for game. Uh, and we just handshake it up. So that's the cool part about Jack. I'm telling you, in a, in a simplified game state, you can stick him. That card is a monster. Uh, and then we'll go into our last matchup, uh, going into the final. It was a short three-man tournament where I'm playing against Kaido. According to Jonathan Rodriguez, he says this matchup is a buy very, very easily for Purple Kaido. But when I was in the Treasure Cup, 
There's a lot of people that came up to me and asked me about Purple uh, Crocodile for whatever reason. And in asking me that, they asked me, how do you beat Purple? And I said to myself, well, you just out-resource them. Um, which seems like a tall order, right? Because a deck like, you know, Purple is very difficult to out-resource. Especially if they hit the God Curve. But if they hit the God Curve, that's what they do. That's what Purple does. And it's why it's such a scary deck, especially in a competitive format. So uh, he opts to go first. He has possibly one of the best openings that he can have in terms of pass Oni. Uh, and it goes back to my turn. I go five at face. Um, so at this point in time, I don't think he heard that I said five at face. And I think he's just kind of, we're literally just staring at each other here. It was the funniest thing. I'm just, and then we finally both figure out like, maybe he doesn't know what I said or, so we, I reiterate, I'm like, oh, by the way, I'm sorry, I said five at face. And he goes ahead and combos out. That's why there's that humongous pause there. But I get to field a Boa Hancock, and Boa Hancock is a super powerful card. Just not in this matchup, especially when he goes to the six. And it's something I was afraid of. I was like, well, I really want to field this Boa here, because if I field this Boa, I start getting the value engine that I had uh, in the previous game, right? From four to five and five to six, which is insane. Uh, the issue is if he slams down a six cost king or starter deck king, we're gonna be a bad spot. But once I see him commit three dawn, I just breath of fresh air, baby. That felt really good. So I know that this bow is gonna at least be able to stick for one turn. He swings at me for eight, which I'm not comboing out of that one. I didn't have enough two Ks in my hands to do so. Uh, and I go ahead and I pass my turn. Now I'm all the way down up to uh, six dawn, which is, I'm down. I'll go five at phase. Uh, I don't plan on using Crocodile's ability at any point in, well, not any point in time, but currently. Uh, and then I'm deciding what I want to do. If this boa turns, like I don't, I don't even put a dawn on this boa. I'll go five at phase, five at phase, and then I have a queen as well as a law, and I think that that's what I'm going to go ahead and uh, commit to this turn. I'm going to use the minus one effect on queen to draw two and then discard one. And guess who's? This guy's like Onigashima. The true combo is draw two, pitch a brick, <laughs> because. You know, funnily enough, in the purple matchup, he seems like he's useful. Uh, I think his true meaning, purpose in life is to be good versus green, right? When they set up the eight cost kid, Douglas Bullet, you know, because of his number threshold being a 10 and being able to, you know, rest two of the big blockers such as Law and Killer might give it a reason to exist in this deck. But um, other than that, this that card was absolutely terrible. I would have honestly changed it for almost anything. <laughs> Uh, probably another event spell. So he's going to go ahead and he's going to uh, seven cost king. Seven cost king is going to go ahead and remove the law. And then he's going to go seven at my boa. And I'll go ahead and defend it here with the queen pitching to two Ks. Uh, again, this seven cost crocodile is really, really good in this matchup. Uh, so it did not feel good losing it there, but I just didn't have any dawn available and I didn't want to lose boa. So I'm going to go six. I'm at five now. Go to six. This, this just feels too good, honestly. He, and I'm okay with him. Bitching 2Ks, baby. Uh, and he goes ahead and finally takes this damage. And then I'm deciding what I really want to do here. If I want to tap three. Do I swing with this queen? What do I want to do? And you know what? Queen, get in there. Go seven. And now seven's a really good number. He's going to blast breath the seven. And that's why I really like seven. Because the fact that it triggers event spells. Because I'd rather pitch one card from hand than pitch two, right? Two cards from hand is much like much more limiting in terms of resources as opposed to a class breath, right? But you don't feel bad about using the Dawn minus one, especially since you have Oni on the stage. Uh, you have the stage on the board. So my opponents had 10 Dawn here. And again, I don't want to commit. The reason I didn't want to play this Crocodile is because my board was already so good, right? I have a five, uh, four drop Boa, Queen. I was going to play an all Sunday. And then if I also play a seven drop on top, I'm getting 10 drop to literally Oblivion. That 10 drop is going to be the craziest idol that's ever been summoned. So I couldn't play into that. And my body really really wanted to uh so i go ahead and i play desert spada here desert spada is gonna go ahead and help me get out of this little key situation that i'm in i'm at four cards in hand uh so i'll trigger the crocodile effect and then i will pitch the miss all sunday which pitching that feels absolutely terrible because that is one of the strongest cards in the game in my opinion that card is so unbalanced uh, but you know it is what it is i didn't want to pitch any other cards in my hand then he goes nine at my boa well, the Missile Sunday is going to go and it's going to add me to Desert Spada. So now I'm at five cards in hand. Well, six actually, I think, right? Because you drew one for leader and then you drew No, I five. Now I'll go to six. All right. <laughs> I'm at six because of the, uh, the leader effect. So since I'm at six, I can't use Boa just yet, which doesn't feel great. So he plays the Uda, and you know what card really is just clean versus Uda, clean versus Boa? Is this six cost king. 
So I have a couple cards in my hand. I don't know if I really want to commit any Dawn this turn. I don't know how I want to do this. I'll go seven at this. And then I will probably keep my Dawn available. I might go five face. I might go six face. But I actually just choose to pass here. He has two cards in hand. And again, I don't want to sweeten the pot. I don't want to play a law. Just chill. I want to keep up some Dawn for events. I haven't really been eventing it up too much this game. Um, I haven't really needed to. Um, so my, when, I, when I see my opponent do that, I was literally just going to grab all my cards and put them in the trash. Uh, but he just uh, 15s at my face. Again, limited options equals good times. So I will lose my queen over my boa any day of the week. I'll go 5 at phase. Here moves up Basil Hawkins. I have 10 Dawn available to me. And again, I can summon a crocodile here, but I, there's just no way that my body... You know, this, like you see how I'm like thinking about doing it, but I just, I just can't, I just can't do it. So I'll go seven, and that's really solid. You know, you're just not committing any dawn, and you're, the work is all being done for you. So I just need to make it so that I'm not uh, baited into summoning it. So I'll go seven. I'm down to five at this point. Boa's gonna go ahead and draw me a card and swing for seven, which is a perfect threshold. I'm gonna go down to two life, and then I still have seven dawn available. I'll put one on my leader and I will pass. Restraint, baby. Restraint. <laughs> I mean, I have every turn I'm at six cards in hand to his very limited amount. I It just doesn't matter. So I will play this as low as humanly possible. I showed the queen off to... There was someone next that asked me about queen and I went ahead and showed it to him. Um, so he's going to go ahead and attach a ton of dawn for a swing here. And uh, I'm thinking of comboing out of this, but... Honestly, just one cost blocker. He's swinging at my boas here, so he's gonna 9, 10, 11, 12. At 12 at a boa, or 12 at the king. Where does he's deciding where he really wants to go? He goes for the boa, and I'm thinking to myself, I have to let her go, unfortunately. Uh, but that's his turn. He keeps one dawn up. Cool. Uh, and then. I I'm, I'm, I'm unfortunately going to be have to be okay with that. I can't really commit any further, so I'll go 7 at face. I mean, sorry, 7 at the king. I still have 8 Dawn to work with. I'm going to go 9 at this king. This should trigger the event spell. Cool. Uh, he puts the Dawn in the trash by mistake. We notice it later, but... And then I field another Boa. Leaving 2 Dawn up. Super cool with that. That's enough for a Desert Spada and as well as a Blast Breath. Uh, he goes ahead and plays the 6-cost King. And yeah, 6-cost King. Well, and now I'm starting to get a little scared, right? Because you know he has these big 7-costs that have no Dawn involvement into them. And uh, I might start having a rough time. So let's see. Go from here. But honestly, this this King is just is going to take me there. So he's going to 5 at my face. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play Desert Spada. Uh, I have 5 cards, so it's just going to be a Desert Spada to look at the top of my deck. And then he still has a lot of Dawn available. He'll go ahead and put uh, a bit of it there. He's going to put four. I'm going to Blast Breath, trigger the Crocodile effect, and then I knew I was going to be a 2k, so I'm going to pitch the 2. And then I'm gonna, he's going to go ahead and pass his turn. So he's tapped out this turn, which is pretty nice. So I'll go 7 at the 2k. I'll go 9. He's gone. I'll go ahead and tap 3 to play a Jack, and I'll pass. Now again, Jack in a simplified game state, really, really good. Uh, he has one card in hand, and oh, he topped Oni. So what I noticed, Jack is not good into purple because they just pitch their bricks, which there is something to be said there. But it's very funny <laughs> if I swing with Jack, he just pitches Oni Gashima. That's a true combo. That's an outplay right there. So I have exactly five cards in my hand, and then go to four, and so on. Go for it. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to defend this king. If he really wants the king gone, it can be gone. It doesn't have to win me the game. And one thing that's really cool that my opponent kept uh, you know, talking about is like, man, I really want to burn you. But I'm at three life. You know, but there's there's only so much that he's available, his dawn available, right? So he goes ahead and attaches eight. I'm not comboing out of eight. He goes seven. That is a beam. I go down to three, double draw, right back up to five. And then he's thinking here if he wants to burn... And then I explained to him that you, there's just no feasible way that you can burn because if you do burn, I will then be able to field the seven drop and then that seven drop, and this is me explaining to him. He's like, man, I really want to burn you. And I'm like, please, like, I mean, just don't do it because that then allows me to play the seven. The reason I can't field this seven is because I, I just don't want to lose it off to a 10 drop. I'm just going to force you to 10 drop slowly. 
So I'm going to queen here, draw two. I don't need this king. Again, now I'm feeling like the purple player. I'm going to go five at lead, minus one. So pitch a card. That's very funny. And then he's still dealing five. So he goes to take the five. And I'm very cool with it. Six, show me a 2K. He showed me the 2K. And then I pass my turn. Uh, five cards in hand, as is Crocodile. Um, so again, you can pick up everything. And I'm like, ah, the time has come. But alas, it just never comes. <laughs> so my opponent here, again, thinking what he wants to do. Very limited options with the purple, uh, as a purple player right now. So he's going to go ahead, one, two, three, four, five on this. Again, 12 out of four. And I'm just thinking to myself, man, once again, I can combo out of this. Do I combo out of this is the, the next question. He'd have still five Dawn available to him. Uh, and then he's showing like a queen. So basically, I, if I choose to combo, so again, 12, so he goes to 6, I go down to 5, I'll Blast Breath, trigger his effect, so I'll go to 10 right now, and then I'll double draw. Yeah. And there we go. Back up to 5 cards in hand, and the Jack is saved. And then he commits 4 to swing at this Jack, and I will pitch the Queen. Uh, I believe the Jack in this game state is stronger than the queen how crazy is that huh so i'll be at uh nine dawn and he has one up so i'll go seven he has to blast breath this and then i think to myself what is the only feasible combo to get out of this it has to be blast breath 2k and then i'm gonna rip a card from him so i'm gonna swing for um nk minus one dawn so he's gonna have to remove a card from hand he places the back maria so he goes blast breath 2k uh, and now he's at zero cards in hand Zero cards in life. You. Uh, and it's as crazy as it may sound, that wasn't like a great move for me, right? Putting him at zero, zero. We clap. So we're you know, back we do with the, the deck. Uh, wait, hold and... up. So we do like the fist bump of friendship. But one thing I wanted to note there is that that was a little spooky for me, right? Because had he top decked a queen, we only have one attacker on the board. We're not really in a great spot, but we have like infinite events in our hands and just combo power. And we could have extended the game a little bit further, even if he top decked the queen. Uh, but certainly putting him to 0-0, zero, zero, man, that jack was just super duper cool. So something I really wanted to notice, and really wanted to not like elevate or promote or say like jack is absolutely crazy, but let me tell you, that card felt amazing all night. So I will be keep, I will keep playing Purple Crocodile, the film starter deck. Those cards feel really, really good. Weakest card in my deck had to be Douglas Bullet, but again, maybe I have to keep him there for the green matchup. I'll get back to you on that. Either way, if you guys like the deck, want to try the deck out for yourself, the deck profile or the, the list, the recipe will be in the description down below. So give it a shot. It is a very slow deck. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it feels absolutely powerful. So definitely give it a shot. And I'm going to leave it to myself to finish off the video. See you guys. And uh, yeah, Purple Crocodile is insane and very, very powerful with those film cards. Although I only was able to have one film starter deck, uh, the two Udas and the Douglas Bullet did a little bit more than I expected them to do, especially the Uda. Um, but I had a lot of variety with my games. We played against Doflamingo, really cool matchup. In my opinion, a very difficult matchup. Played against Kaido, which some people would argue is a very difficult matchup, but felt really fine with me. And also we got to play a green matchup as well, which I would say, is another difficult matchup. So we definitely had uh, quite a bit of variety for the games. It was a lot of fun. There was a lot of good One Piece content. So I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed it. If you guys like this video, leave a like down below. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about my plays or want to support the channel or have any sort of discussions in the comment section, leave a comment. I'm pretty active down there. And as always, guys, if you haven't joined the Yeehaw Pirate Group and would like to join, consider subscribing. It would mean the world. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah. Please say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say I cannot. I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong.